Uh, Senator, I want to talk about another way that there seems to be this real upward pressure on the cost of living, and that's going to be these IR laws, which are coming through. And we've heard new reports about the way the new laws are going to smash family businesses, particularly by letting you know unionists into family businesses, destroying trust within small businesses, uh, and creating basically a situation where big businesses can absorb the cost of regulation and these, you know, union activities, whereas small businesses can't. Tell us about that, and are you concerned that we are returning to sort of the old days uh, pre-reform when basically big governments, big unions, and big government um, all carved up the pie together? Uh, we're not returning to the old days. Those days never left as far as I'm concerned, James, <laughs> yeah. and this is just yes. another march. Uh, from the left uh, into small business. And what will happen here, if it's not the regulation that will strangle small business, it's the intimidation. Small business, you just won't bother employing anyone. I actually, the, the article you sent me yesterday to read up on it, I actually sent that to one of my best mates who runs a small business down on the Gold Coast uh, because I knew the impact it would have on him. He has a small number of employees, uh, but he's got the guts. He gets up at four o'clock every morning and it will have a severe impact on him. And I know this guy, like a lot of people who run small businesses, they epitomise everything that's great about this country and they don't like the government telling them what to do and they don't like other people telling them what to do. And I know that, you know, he's not going to like having unions come on, come into his business and tell him what he can and can't do. And as, and as he should, because he's out there putting his nose to the grindstone every day uh, and it's up to us to make sure that we don't let the unions destroy small business in this country. Rita. Well, small business, big business, it's all being uh, hurt with energy costs. And yet we've got Chris Bowen. Um, seems to be pretty occupied with you. We talked about the debate <laughs> he won't have with you. He won't debate you, but he is on social media, on X, tweeting like some sort of a first-year arts student, <laughs> defaming you with all sorts of slurs. You've uh, got in his head there, uh, Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with that? Have you considered, I don't know, legal action? He's not exactly under parliamentary privilege when he's uh, calling you uh, just terrible things and suggesting you're a cooker, and we know what that means. It's not complimentary in any way. Oh, look, Rita, that stuff doesn't worry me. That's part of the life on social media. And if anything, he's the loser out of this. Uh, and, and it demonstrates that the level of censorship and gaslighting goes right through to the top of the Labor Party. Uh, and yet again, and I'll, and I'll call out to him today, or any other minister or member of the Labor Party or the Greens that wants to debate issues around climate change, uh, around the performance of our bureaucrats, uh, I'm happy, and I know, you know many of my colleagues would be happy to debate you at any time, any place, uh, because these issues are too important and they shouldn't be pushed under the carpet. Uh, so that you guys can get away with spreading your lies. Well, I think, Gerard, you've got a really good point there that uh, Labor just refused to debate these things. They push ahead with these mad policies, particularly on climate change, but in many other areas, without having the proper debate, without listening to those alternative opinions, and the average Australian suffers. But the great news is you're there fighting. So let's give your Twitter, your X handle, a plug. If you want to hear what is upsetting Chris Bowen so much, please follow at Senator Ren there on Twitter and X, and you'll actually hear common sense arguments about the things that this government are doing so wrong in this country. Gerard Rennick, great as always to have you here on Outsiders, and keep up the great fight.